All right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Hurley Investments Market View Commentary on Monday evening, February 26, 2024. Uh, you'll recognize that this is not Kevin. This is Keeve Bybee here with you this evening. Kevin away with some uh, uh, for the evening for some soccer tryouts for a son. So I am taking over for tonight. So it is good to be with you. Got a good crowd here. So I think everything is going to be awesome. Just like that Lego movie said. Hi, Abraham. Welcome, everybody. All right. So let's get right into it. A um, couple of things I wanted to go over, and that's why we have this big blank space here. But uh, just a real quick, just to note our big picture from uh, briefing.com. And all of this basically going over our magnificent seven as they explain in their last paragraphs here basically um, as they they go through all those things uh, the big test was for the magnificent seven our big stocks uh, the amazon apple nvidia netflix and so on and so forth needed to have good earnings for the most part had good earnings pushed our markets higher through february so that's pretty much that I'll let you guys read through that if you would like to as this gets posted. And I'll just make the comment once again, we are driving up our market based on basically seven stocks. S&P 500, 500, I think it's like 503 total big blue chip stocks in the stock market. And seven of those are the reason pretty much for all of this run here, all of our gains last year in the stock market. So it's both uh, I guess interesting, uh, I, it's good, helps everything else out. These big behemoths help everybody else out. But we also learned back in, man, 2021, all those big guys were pretty much flat and it was the little guys that took over. I suspect, and as we've commented before, it might be the case again this year, although it doesn't, it's not telling us that these first few months, it's not as though both can't happen at the same time. We'll get our microns and our marathons and our smaller stocks, under armors and so on, kicking in and uh, taking off. But obviously, so far, it's been those big boys once again. Stuart, you're not hearing me. Is anyone else hearing me? Hello, hello. Okay. Looks like everybody else is hearing me. 
Stuart, I think it's on your end. I'm not sure what to tell you. Everybody else is hearing me, it sounds like. All right, what did I want to go over? I just want to do a, what should I call it? A, uh, a little bit of a re-education on technicals. And man, is that small. It's not supposed to be that small. Let's get a different font here. Copy that. Technicals, and it really doesn't like that S, does it? So reason for this, a um, few people have asked, why do we look at this? Why do we, why are we protecting here? Why are we not protecting here? Why are we going off these numbers on our charts? Why, why, why? And that's totally awesome. I'm glad those questions are asked. So I thought it was important to see what we're looking at and why we look at it give you guys a chance to kind of have a refresher course if you've seen and talk about this before, but also those of you who haven't really heard us go through it to have a chance to hear that. So why do we look at technicals? So while I figure out our font, I want you guys to answer the question for me. Why do we look at and use technicals, technical charts, technical indicators? What are some of your either reasons or guesses? I think okay, a couple answers coming in. Uh, I'll make a comment before I read those. Um, it's pretty easy to understand why we need fundamentals, why we're looking at the company's numbers, their output, sales, et cetera, et cetera. That's a pretty much a no brainer. Pretty much a no brainer to look at economics and kind of the big umbrella view of the whole economy, the world economy, the US economy, inflation, interest rates all of those things matter because they all affect our businesses but charts and technical charts that pretty much just show daily prices on a horizontal page over time i mean it's just showing the prices <laughs> Why is it so important? All right. 
I got one comment says they are the basis of sound decision making. Okay, we've got another comment can give an indication as to stock movement in the future. Okay. I think uh, the first comment, basis of sound decision making. Um, I think it's definitely one of those three things that is a big part of it. Definitely think fundamentals are more important. Because it doesn't matter how a chart looks. If the company is just not fundamentally sound. I mean, you had GameStop a couple of years ago, and, and I think even recently it started up again, but people putting money into GameStop and the chart's going up and the chart looks just crazy. But just a fundamentally piece of garbage of a company. All right, second comment um, can give an indication of future movement. And so I would say both of those are definitely in there. Both of those comments. I think the main point is if I can get some bold here. Main point is shows. Oh my gosh, come on. Give me some bold. All right, there we go. Shows us. Herd mentality. What does that mean? FOMO, fear of missing out when the stock goes up and I don't have a good acronym for this, but I'm just going to say fear of losing money. <laughs> That's why when things go down, they do big, they go down quick. Everybody's trying to get out at once, and you see those big red marks that just fall and fall and fall. Let's go back three years. We really need to go back five years, don't we? If I can just zoom in here. February, <laughs> it's February 26th, 2020. February 20th, 2020. Dow was up at 29,296. Within a couple days, it was down to 26. A couple days later, down to 20, 19, 
and then started to come back up. So, geez. About 10,000 points off of the Dow in a matter of a week or two. This is herd mentality. So it gives us an idea of herd mentality. What are we interested in? Why do we use these blue lines and the red lines and this garbage up here? What is that for? We are interested in seeing where big money has buy and sell orders stacked up. We want to know what the big institutions are looking at and where they're plotting the course. So what does that look like? 50 day moving average, simple moving average here. This blue line and the 200 day moving average, this red line. I'll put simple moving average 200 day simple moving average i'm actually going to start a new section here so what do the big boys look at Up here, we have the RSI. RSI, anything above 70 shows when a stock or index is overbought. Anything below 30, here's the numbers, is oversold. which just tells them when they're going to be easing up on a stock, it's gotten too hot up here, or when there's a good buying opportunity down here. Notice these times, it basically barely touches that RSI on the 30 line becomes a buying opportunity. And then we have the Williams percent R, very similar. Williams percent R does some a similar thing, but moves a little faster, a little more extreme. Any of those they're definitely looking at this, these little periods where oversold, 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 and that gives them the excuse 
to be buying in So above 70, overbought, and below 30, oversold. Then we have the MACD. I'll put the William percent R. We have MACD. It is a momentum indication. If I can type here, momentum. More buying momentum, more selling momentum. That's what it's telling us. What do we also do? We also have a five and 20 day exponential moving average. Blue is the five, 20 is the red. Those cross over for us. There we go. 20 day moving average. When the five and 20 exponential moving average cross over each other, it indicates a bullish, technically bullish run or bearish. And the 50 and 200, same thing. We get crossovers one way or the other. It's a big longer term bearish or bullish indication. Technically, we're still in a bullish long term run as that 50 day is above the moving average of the 200 day. And Prices and moving averages tell us support and resistance. I feel like there's another P in there.
Any questions so far? We are going to dive into the, what each of these is and then go from there. Anyone want to tell me what I mean by support and resistance? Really, this is what we're looking for. We went back to where is the big money stacking their buy and sell orders? They have to go ahead of time and say, we're going to put orders here so that if the stock market hits or the, or a certain stock in our fund hits these levels, we're going to be placing buy orders and thousands of little buy orders get placed up right here here and here. Buy and sell orders. If there are more buy orders and sell orders at a given price. We see a support level holding and the stock or index bouncing up if we see sell orders stacked up at a certain price they are trying to book a profit there. And this turns into a resistance level. So you look at the chart again, just in these last uh, few months. If I was to look at price support and resistance levels, I would have to look at here, might be a resistance level, here would be a resistance level. We have this one here, it even kind of came off to this one. 4,100 is an even number. I mean, I know one is an even number, but you know what I mean? A round number, 4,100. Had some resistance here, resistance here. More recently, we've had more resistance here. Support, I mentioned this one. Obviously not a easy to see when it's sitting there because it just bounced there one day. But if we ever go back down the other way, we're gonna look at 4,100 at some point as a support level because that's where it bounced off of before. 
we're also going to look at each of these resistance levels as support levels if our stock goes down the other way. Previous support or previous resistance is also future support. We can look at this channel and say, you know what, there's obviously support there. So we just kind of look at things and look what it's done and gives us an idea of where our support and resistance levels are. And it's one tick of information that helps us decide on a more regular basis where we're gonna be adding protection, where we're gonna wait to add protection if we're hitting a support level, or whether we're gonna be adding a protection up here on these resistance level prices to protect some profits. It's one piece of information that gives us an idea where these big money institutions are looking at and where there might be some herd mentality as a lot of other people are looking at these same things and understanding that these big block money orders that these big institutions put on these certain prices where those might be and that is really technical analysis in a nutshell. Had Investopedia open here just to get a couple definitions. What is RSI? Stochastic RSI is an indicator used to, in technical analysis that ranges between 0 and 100 on some charting platforms and is created by applying the stochastic oscillator formula to set a relative strength index, or RSI, values than to standard price data. Using RSI values within the stochastic formula gives traders an idea of whether their current RSI value is overbought or oversold. The stochastic oscillator was developed to take advantage of both momentum indicators in order to create a more sensitive indicator that is attuned to a specific security's historical performance rather than a generalized analysis of price range. So instead of just looking over the price range over a certain amount of time, it looks like it. it it takes into account its momentum and historical performance to give us an idea of whether this stock is historically getting a little heated, overbought, going up a little faster than it normally does, or whether it's been oversold and kind of been beat up. They give different indicators, uh, there's different RSIs indicators we use one that goes from that uh, uses 30 and 8 and excuse me 70 to indicate whether it's overbought or oversold williams percent r is going to be fairly similar i'm going to look up macd all of these have different formulas that drive the different charts Mac, moving average convergence divergence is a trending a trend following momentum indicator there's that word again that shows the relationship between two exponential moving averages i told you the 5 and 20 the macd line is calculated by subtracting the 26 period ema from the 12 period ema the result of the calculation is the MACD line, a nine-day EMA and MACD line is called the signal line, which is then plotted on top of the MACD line 
which can function as a trigger for both for buy or sell signals. Blah, 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 blah. None of this even matters as far as what you guys need to understand. <laughs> but this is the definition. I encourage you, if you want to understand better, go to Investopedia, plug these in. Buy or sell signals, but really what we use it as is indication of bullish or bearish crossovers. So we're looking at Micron. I like Micron. We have our 50 and 200 day here. We have our MACD crossover right here. That's crossing over to the upside, so that is a bullish indicator. We have the RSI crossing above that 50 midpoint line. That's a bullish indicator. And what you're not seeing on this chart is our third indicator that tells us whether a stock is in a bullish trend. And that's the five and 20. We got one, two, three. We even got this one down here on the Williams for Seminar. But we get those three big ones. There's a surefire sign that that stock has changed direction and is in a bullish pattern, bullish trend rather. When, and I'm repeating myself here, I'm sorry, but when we get three crossovers on RSI 50 or midpoint, the five and 20 exponential moving averages and the MACD EMAs crossing over. This tells us where or what our trend is. If you guys want to know, whenever you see those cheap, well, they're not cheap in price, they're expensive. But I'll say bogus, bogus education or trading signals sales garbage what they are likely doing is just copying copying's not the right word just giving you stocks
stock indicators. We'll say buy, sell. When to buy and sell. They are just using these crossovers. So something you paid all this money to do, they somehow know some great secret that and none of the big banks could care, care less about. They have some secret trading garbage that they say they've got from some great computer algorithm or whatever it is. All they're really doing is something you could do for free on stock charts, looking at your crossovers. So you heard me make fun of it. Why is it so important? Again, it is what the big money is looking at. One I didn't mention was our pivot points. You see these little green lines. They are short term support and resistance levels. Less reliable than our big long term resistance and support levels and price levels, which are usually indicated by these big, long, smooth moving averages. Big round numbers 4700 4450 4100 why does the stock have resistance levels and then suddenly break through them institutions had their their price sell orders stacked up there and then guess what happened all those sell orders got used up when a sell order all those sell orders stacked there get used up we have these big gaps. We get a nice big bullish run. Of course, this is just a, a day or two, but we get a breakaway above those support, or excuse me, those resistance levels. Same things if it, if it were to happen the other way. Sell orders, uh, excuse me, buy orders on the support level here. Those get used up and the bottom falls out. But you can, you can see from the chart, all these things, they change all the time. Resistance levels get broken through, support levels get broken through. We're on a bullish run, so we're more likely to see those resistance levels break through and support levels hold. Higher lows, each of these higher, low higher low higher low sorry if that doesn't make sense to say higher low but each of those low where it tops out pairs back a bit has support goes sideways moves back above 
breaks the resistance level, comes back a couple days, gives it an excuse to go higher, hits a resistance level, hits those sell orders, comes back, hits some buy orders, support, breaks above the resistance levels. All we're doing is taking note of what has happened to get an idea how the market is dealing with economic numbers, how the market's dealing with earnings reports. I like to use the analogy Chart reading is like a blind man feeling a statue to get an idea what it looks like. We don't know the future but the past gives us some probabilities. Looking at the past tells us what some of the probabilities are. Tells us where if the stock starts to fall, where might, there might be some support and resistance levels. Tells us like I just told you, well, if we've got some of these support levels, and we're in this bullish run and our news is positive and we've got interest rates with the idea that they're coming down, we've got inflation coming down, we're in this bullish run, these resistance levels are probably gonna get broken, et cetera, and et cetera. Guys, Give me your questions, thoughts. What else would you like me to talk about with regard to this? Does any of that make any sense whatsoever? <laughs> Obviously, this is all, we'll all be here for you. when it gets posted and you can go over it as much as you'd like to. We wanna know where a stock has its support resistance. We wanna know whether it's technically bullish or bearish. We wanna know where the big money is stacking their buy and sell orders up. I'll say the past doesn't guarantee the future by any means, but it can tell us some probabilities. So, yes, Russ, I basically just said exactly what you said. Jim said, I'm beginning to understand things better. 
Renee, how do you feel about things from a financial advisor? Um, can you give me a little more, Renee, what you're referring to? You mean as as far as looking at technicals and charts, how I feel about it as a financial advisor? If you can give me a little more there of what what you're asking me, I I can answer that for you. I'm not I'm not understanding what you're you're trying to get out. I'd like to under I'd like to answer you. Take a minute to write that in. Um, just to go over everything else fairly quickly. Earnings dates we've got Baidu coming up, Costco at the beginning of March. Um, Coca-Cola, that was already done. Micron, always reporting way late on estimated March 30th. Had this chart up of Micron. People are seemingly starting to catch on that the government is gonna be plugging millions and millions of dollars into this company. Where will our markets end this week? I'm gonna say lower. Since we've talked about technicals, kind of coming up against a short-term tech uh, resistance. No, we don't use pivot points with uh, as a gospel truth, you can see where they kind of have shown some some reliability, but I mean it's just one little point and to give us an idea, we would never use it as a singular important thing. Um, but why would I say that? Well, we've got economic numbers coming up this week that we'll go over in a minute. Technically, the Dow is still bullish. S&P is still bullish, especially with popping up this last week. And the NASDAQ bullish as well. We won't complain. We will just try and make as much money as we can as these go up. Renee asked, overall, moving forward, do you feel like this is going to go for a while because of election year or short-lived for a fall or uh, for a fail? So overall, uh, election years are usually good for the stock market. Um, the Fed is going to probably around um, the summer stop doing a whole lot just so they don't have as much of an influence on the market. Um, generally, uh, I'm bullish for the year. Now we're getting into a couple months here. March is not a, uh, typically bullish month. Um, February isn't either, but we went up in February. We're having a run based on earnings and you heard me talk about those magnificent seven stocks pushing things up higher as most of those had decent earnings. Um, minus Tesla. <laughs> uh, don't know why that's still considered one of the magnificent, but that's what it is. Um, we're going to be getting over March and April some tax selling. People taking profits to be able to pay taxes. March, uh, as I just mentioned, is typically not a bullish month. So we've been enjoying some good earnings our stocks have been moving up and we've taken protection off a lot of things to, to just let those things run 
and uh, yeah, we're going to be more near term. Renee will be getting into protecting some profits as uh, tax selling starts to happen over the next month. But overall, um, should be a good year. Again, talked about the, the big seven stocks, how they were such a big influence from last year and continuing on for this year. But we also have so many stocks and most of the stock market that hasn't participated in that run that we could see make that uh, make those moves looking at disney big jump up had had good earnings they're coming back as it typically happens as a to test a support level right here at 107 could probably say 107.40 got under armor Man, Under Armour just sat around nine to eight to nine. Man, it got of as low as six, but for a while now we've gone from eight to nine, seven fifty more recently. But it's just kind of not taken off like you'd expect, and like their fundamentals should tell everybody that they're doing so well. Big growth opportunity there. That's one we'd like to see feel a little bit of market love. Whoops. Talked about Micron just a minute ago. Marathon oil. Trended down. They're going to be making more money. War in the Middle East. We've used up our oil reserves and the government's going to start having to refill those reserves and buy more oil we feel that prices on oil are going to go up again so long answer for you those are some of the the things that we're looking at there's a lot of opportunity with stocks that just haven't made the runs so if our magnificent big stocks kind of tap out or just don't uh, keep running up there's strong reason to believe that a lot of other stocks that haven't had any market love will get some of that in this year. All right, where are we going to end up in February? I'm going to say up 1%. Earnings. Domino's Pizza. What was DDS? I forget. We got Zoom. lot of retail stocks we got macy's ebay urban outfitters vizio those uh, tv screens baidu on wednesday coming up tj maxx another retail big one crm the salesforce best buy another retail Papa John's Pizza. We threw six flags in there because kind of gives us an idea of things for Disney, although Disney's parks are always going to do much better than six flags. Had new home sell economic reports today. They were uh, lower. Consumer confidence tomorrow. Um, Usually important, although it's, I mean, it's just a just a uh, just a survey, just people's opinion. Oil inventories Wednesday, but the one we're looking for is PCE prices on Thursday. That's more inflation numbers. All of these things are going to be moving our futures overnight. And those are the things we're going to be looking at. How are we looking to trade? Kind of already talked about this. Took puts off, 
long puts off and letting some things run. We're still in that pattern. Um, if you want to know a little more on the merger between Capital One and Discover, Kevin mentioned that last time. Here's an article on it. Pretty interesting. Um, another article on what might be happening in the near future with uh, Russia preparing a bigger, a new offensive. Something for you guys to be aware of. Are there any questions? Been a long, nice long webinar. Hopefully it hasn't been extremely boring. <laughs> Hope the understanding uh, has increased on why we look at technicals. Again, it's not the most important thing in the world. We're looking and checking at things every day to see where things are at, where we might need to protect, where we might need to let things run. Um, but it's one piece of understanding what's coming up. Understanding that we've got tax selling coming up, understanding that we've got PCE prices later this week. Just things to be aware of and understand. And we're always trying to stay on the front foot and seeing what's coming up, understanding what has happened so that we can keep you guys in the loop and keep your stocks protected when they need to be protected and making money when things are looking up. Any last questions? All right, guys, I'm not seeing anything come through. I'll take that as a good sign. Thanks for joining me today. I'll have Kevin get this all posted up. You can see and refer back to these as much as you need to. And of course, anything that you need to bring up again, please do in any of these webinars. And uh, Typically, I do the Thursday morning ones. Kevin will take over Thursday morning so you can hear him talk about some things. Uh, good to be with you guys. Have a good night and have a good week. Take care.